The national debt need never be repaid. What I've just said is a simple, straightforward economic truth. We've had a national debt in the UK since about 1694, when the Bank of England was created to lend a little over a million pounds to the then new William and Mary, who were on the throne together in a very strange situation that developed after what was called the Glorious Revolution. And we've never really got rid of the national debt since then. There must therefore be a good reason for having it. Nothing survives for 330 years without somebody benefiting. Now, one group who have obviously benefited enormously from the existence of the national debt are those bankers in the City of London who dealt in it. And you could argue that that's why it still continues. And I most certainly would agree with that to some degree because, and let's be very clear about this, they do undoubtedly benefit from trading in the national debt. And as I've explained in another video, they also badly need the bonds or gilts that make up most of this debt to underpin their activities as city bankers. So, the national debt exists to keep bankers happy, and repaying it would very definitely make them very unhappy because they would not have the bonds that they need to literally make sure that the UK economy could function in the way that it does using the City of London to underpin our whole banking system. But there's more reason than that as to why we don't need to repay the national debt. Because let's be clear about why the national debt in its modern form, that which has existed since there has been no relationship between the money used in this country and the gold standard, must continue and never needs repayment. This national debt exists because the government has spent more into the economy as a consequence of its spending programs that have been approved by Parliament than it has collected back by way of tax. That is a simple, straightforward statement of fact. That is how the national debt is created. There has been too little taxation, which fact has, of course, kept most people quite happy because I have noticed that quite a lot of people don't like paying tax or at least grumble and groan about it, even though they know that it is incredibly important for the sake of balancing the economy. So, the national debt exists because there has been under taxation. The only way to therefore clear it is, of course, to raise taxation, and in fact, to raise taxation in a way that covers past spending. That would most definitely be unpopular but it's also fundamentally unnecessary because the national debt does not just represent more money spent into the economy than has been collected back by way of tax. It actually represents our money supply. That money that has been left over circulating in the economy is not just represented by notes and coins, and there's around 80 billion pounds of those in the national debt, by the way, because the government does owe them to the people of this country which fact it acknowledges because it says on each and every £5, £10 and £20 note that might come into your possession, I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of whichever one of those it might have been. Therefore, the notes and coins issued by the government are debt. But more than that, the money that has been left over by the government inside the national economy is part of our money supply. Not all of our money supply, because, as we know, some of that is also created by private commercial banks when they lend to people like you and me if we go and ask for a loan. But a significant part of our money supply, something like 40% of it, is government created. And it is represented by, as I have said, the national debt. Do we want the government to stop making money for our use in the national economy? Would we like them to withdraw it? Would we like that to imperil the operation of the City of London? Would we wish, therefore, to actually have a future where all money supply was created by private banks at its whim, which is exceedingly volatile when it comes to situations like lending during the course of a recession, when the money supply by commercial banks falls dramatically? I really don't think so. I really do think we want the government to continue to play this role in producing this money supply, which is fundamental to our economic well-being. But more than that, let's be clear, Again, as other videos have explained, the national debt represents private wealth. 
Because after all, all that happens when the government issues gilts or bonds is that private people, whether in their own names or through pension funds or other savings arrangements, end up buying them. And therefore, any increase in the national debt represents an increase in private savings. Far from this being a burden for those who own the national debt, this is a benefit. I have heard so many politicians say over so many years, oh, we must pay off the national debt, which is a burden on our grandchildren. They are so wrong. The lucky grandchildren in question will inherit a part of the national debt because it will form part of the private savings that their parents or grandparents can pass on to them. There is nothing wrong with owning a part of the national debt. If you have an account with national savings and investments, you do own part of the national debt because those are also included in the figure. And that includes things like premium bond holders. And most of us know somebody who's got some of those, even if we haven't. So the point is the national debt is actually something that people want to own. There is no desire to repay it, and repaying it would be a wholly destructive exercise. Have we got the right level of national debt, therefore? Well, that's obviously a good question, and it may be the subject for a separate video in its own right, but let's just point out the fact that the UK has lower national debt in proportion to its national income than most other countries of similar size that are doing quite well for themselves. Not all, but most. And that therefore indicates that we have not by any means stressed ourselves by having the le level of national debt or state created money supply, which is what we're really talking about, that we have. In other words, we don't need to repay the national debt. And doing so would be an outright disastrous thing to do. So why do politicians, journalists and commentators talk about it? Is it just ignorance? Or is there some other motive which is intended to simply reduce the scale of government activity as a consequence of trying to restrict the increase in debt and therefore deny people the services they want? I think it is this latter point that is their true agenda. But whatever it is, they're talking nonsense and something that is contrary to the well-being of this country as a whole, including most people in it. Mm -hmm.